warm up there, Timmy? No. Well, if it means anything, it's not warm down here either. Sure it's not. It's, it's cold still. We have no time to get acclimated to it. Hello. Happy Tuesday. Taco Tuesday to everybody. Uh, did you guys have tacos today for lunch? Uh, I haven't eaten lunch yet. I haven't eaten lunch yet. Uh-huh. I was, thinking, ah. I was thinking about a salad, yeah. maybe a salmon salad. I don't know. I, I had a salad for yeah. lunch, actually, so I didn't. I didn't do Taco Tuesday, but uh, there's still one there's more meal. But yeah, I did salad. It field of greens. You did what? You field like of that, greens? This place. I have. I get this reaction every time. Everyone's like shocked that I like field of greens. Like no one likes field of greens. Just I've like. never heard of field of greens. Greens. I think they're just shocked that you enjoy salads no. i'm not i've you just never heard of the place you didn't enjoy salads kim <laughs> i didn't say you did i do like salads uh, i get a chicken southwest salad that's kind of yes. taco-ish right yeah like it's in the taco yeah family. taco-esque do you have corn chips yeah in i there? got jalapeno ranch. yeah corn chips yeah a little corn a little tomatoes mm-hmm. and the green stuff and a lot of chicken. Yeah. But all oh, the chicken. It's not too bad. No. So much chicken. Not too bad. I, I'm like a person who puts like a lot of, I've put a lot of dressing yeah. mm. on my salads. Um, like a decent amount. My, like my crew chief, Todd Gordon, he doesn't have any dressing. So he's. Yeah, I hardly happy. use any dressing when I eat salads. Yeah. I think it all yeah. depends on what type of, like where the green, like what type of greens I have and what type of. Toppings. toppings i have because if it's like subpar greens i'll probably go a little bit more uh, salad but i got some really nice spinach from the farmer's market that is really good so it like the flavor of the the spinach is really is you know kind of helps with the bed of the salad just saying who knew that <laughs> you boys would be geeking really out on salads and i got some really nice sweet italian peppers the other day too which was uh so you know hey mm-hmm. welcome hey. to welcome to salad talk with uh, Ryan, Kim, and Chuck. I bought some uh, festive uh, Halloween sugar cookies with ghosts on them. Ooh. Switch it up a little bit. I'm going to throw those in the oven later. The ones baked in, like it's the ghosts are baked in? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they're sugar tiny, cookies. tiny little. Purple ghosts? I feel like purple. Yeah, they're purple ghosts. Yeah. So, I... I'm pumped up. I'm going to make some earlier or later today. My stepdad so. does that and he hands them out to like all of uh, his kids and then his grandkids um, as just like, here's your tin of sugar cookies. And then he does party mix. It's almost party mix time. So everybody's uh, geeked out about that. What's in the party mix? It's like Chex Mix with Worcestershire. 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 Um, and then some other stuff that he does. Um, Again, that's like Christmas presents for everyone. It's his party mix. I'm not a big like Chex Mix party mix guy. Me neither. I don't, I'm never like people get so excited for it. I've just never been a big fan. Yeah. I don't like all of the stuff in it. Like I've, I like the pretzels and the um, little, uh, the Cheerios and all that stuff in it. But like the big, uh, is it the walnuts that are in there? I'm not a big fan of the walnuts. I, I, feel, like, I feel like every party mix is a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm a big sun chips guy. Sun chips? Mm-hmm. That was my favorite when I was like in high school, sun chips. The, what was the French onion one? Isn't there like a French onion one? They used to have a French onion one. I don't know if they do now. I know it's like there's some cheddar ones. I got, I like garden salsa. Uh, oh, garden yeah, really that good. is a good one. Yeah, that is. Um, that is. <laughs> do you know what discovery I found? Uh, if you haven't done it yet, you're welcome. Um, I'm a big fan of the cheddar ruffles, sour cream and cheddar ruffles. With the ridges? Yes. yes. Yeah, the ridges and hummus. Dip in hummus. Okay. Yeah, pretty Noted. good. And also, puffy Cheetos and hummus are pretty amazing. Delightful. I like a good pita chip. I don't know if I've talked about the pita chips from Reed's on here before, but it's a local like grocer deli place in Charlotte. They have the best pita chips in the history of pita chips. That's what I go for when I'm looking for a chip to dip. I d- have I you had the pita chips? They're like good pita chips, though. They're I think they're fried. They're not like baked pita chips. That 
I'm not a huge pita chip fan, like the kind from like the grocery store, but these are almost like, like tortilla pita chips almost is the best way to describe. They don't, they don't break in the dip and they have good flavor by themselves. Ryan, have you had the baked ruffles, sour cream and cheddar? Like the baked version, okay. not the, not the fried, like the normal ones, like the normal. Yeah. The one. baked. Yeah. Yeah. Is that pretty good? Yeah. Those they are, don't, they don't have the ridges. I still like the flavor though. Like that, that just that mm-hmm. flavor of those with all that. I'm going to try that with the hummus. That's, yeah. that's the thing. That's the, yeah. yeah you I've can become a big hummus person <laughs> in my older age. Big hummus oh. guy. Wine and hummus. hummus <laughs> that's Blaney's. Uh, I don't know about that combination. Wine I don't hummus know. and salads. Who would have guessed? Yeah. I mean, with the, I, I, I assume that's a lovely fireplace behind you in your, in, in your new house. Um, yeah. Where, where the TV is. That looks like the perfect place to just sort of sit there, sip some wine, dip some uh, ruffles, sour cream, and uh, cheddar chips into some hummus, and then uh, have a salad. That seems like a, a lovely Do you evening. do plain hummus, or do you like a flavored hummus? Uh, the hummus I get, I, I think it's plain, but it's got the little stuff in the middle. Like the little oh, hummus. like the Sombrus, I think, brand? I think so. But it's, yeah, yeah, I think that's the brand I got. But, um yeah, I don't know what's in the middle. It's a little bit different. Maybe it's a little spicy, a little tasty, mm. but plain hummus with that little stuff in the middle is pretty pretty great. Grab a little bit of that middle stuff. That's what I'm going to call it on each dip. Pretty solid. You can always tell when the majority of us haven't eaten lunch yet on these shows because at some yeah. point we go in a deep dive about food. I just mm-hmm. had some oatmeal today, so I'm, I'm really getting hungry now with all this chip talk. Um and I'm going to make a transition. I'm going to try a transition. You know who else was hungry? Joey Logano at Kansas Speedway. Mm-hmm. Hungry for a win and now competing in the uh, round of the championship round at Phoenix. Crazy we're already talking about the championship round. It's flown by. It doesn't feel like we only have three races left. I know. It was like the year's been long but fast. <laughs> Does that make sense? Long but fast. That's the title of my sex tape. Long but fast. <laughs> Better than slow and short, I guess. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's an oxymoron, long and fast. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Aurora didn't like that one. <laughs> she didn't like that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. I've been watching a lot of Brooklyn Nine Nine, so I was doing the the, the little uh, <laughs> little nod to Nine Nine. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Kansas. Kansas. Yeah, yeah. That was a good race. It was cold. I don't know if you guys were in Kansas, but it was freezing cold. I wasn't, but I saw everybody's post. It was like what in the forties. I feel like Kansas is either really hot or really cold. Yeah, it was windy, overcast, and like low forties all day. Um, great, it didn't rain, but it, it looked like rain weather. But it uh, never came, which is good. But yeah, it was it was super freezing. Uh, that's uh, someone told me that that was like the coldest race in like five years. Oh, really? Uh, Martinsville. And like Martinsville in 2015 was like 40. Is that, the, um, is that the year that it snowed at Martinsville? Like in the morning? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Or maybe that was even 16. But yeah. some One of them years, yeah, it uh, snowed at Martinsville. And it was, uh, maybe it was, maybe on a little bit. Maybe that was 18 even. But. I just know when I yeah. tuned into the pre-race and like Kurt Busch is on there giving an interview with like his mask on, a hoodie and a jacket. And I was like, is he yeah. going, is this, yeah, tune into skiing? Are we doing a skiing thing now? Because it looked like he had on a ski mask and not just like a regular like COVID mask. I didn't think about that. Yeah. COVID masks are going to help keep your face warm during the winter times. That and beards. Mm-hmm. Um, a big scarf. Can a scarf be... A COVID mask? Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, like the uh, Lenny Kravitz. I love that meme. The one of Lenny Kravitz where he's got a scarf and it's basically like a blanket. I'm, I know you know what I'm talking about. I think if I've you seen Google that. Lenny Kravitz scarf, you will see it. Lenny Kravitz scarf. Okay, I'm going to Google it. Um, I, I do have a question coming out of uh, Kansas. Oh, oh, Kevin, knocking on the door to 10. Do you think he gets ten this year? Do you think he he hits it, or is this it? Has he done his done his winning? 
I think he's what's cool? Is he at nine? He's at nine. He's, he's sitting at nine. at nine, and like that double digit win, it's hard. Like I think Jimmy Johnson was the last time somebody got double digit wins in a season. Right? He did it. Yeah. yeah. I think I there's think too many, uh, too many good players at Texas, and then Martinsville is kind of a, I will call it a wild card. And then Phoenix, like Phoenix was Kevin's track, but that was like years ago, not since the reconfiguration. I think he can do it. Uh, Kevin, Texas is really good for him. Phoenix has been fast. Martin Joe, they struggle a little bit, but I mean, I think he's got a shot. We'll see. We'll well, see. I'm here for it. I was kind of, I mean, I know Joey is your teammate, but like part of me was like, I want to see the 10th win. I just want to see it. I want to see how many he can get. Because at this point, it's like, you know what? Go big or go home. You know? I mean, my yeah. guy, my guy's not running for the title right now. So, I, you know, I want to see, like, just history made right now. That, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I know. I'm not running for the title. I, it's killing you, Chuck. I know. I get it. Look, look, look. No, it sucks. I, I know you weren't talking about me, but it's, you know, it's okay. Well, no, 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 no. I, I, would, I would put you on, like, as this podcast. I mean, you, you're my guy. I want to see you do well. I want to see you win. I want to see you get that title. I want to see you get all the wins. Um, but, I mean, if you, if my guy's not there, then, you know, who am I going to pull for? Yeah, it's the Ford. Yeah, you got two Fords going for a win. I'm just saying. I want to see mm. history. I want to see history. So, that's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We will. We will have to wait and see. Um, <laughs> a thing we didn't have to wait and see, and, Ryan, I want to get your reaction on this. Uh, the new Sturgill album. Have you listened to it? I did. I listened to it. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, Sturgill Simpson cut and grass. Yeah. Is the, uh, is the name of the album. And, uh, it's a lot of songs. It's like 20, 20 songs on there. Yeah, exactly. 20. And there's, um, it's really just like a bluegrass album. Um, he's redone a lot of his songs. Some of the songs on there that he's, you know, that he's done before. I, I like them mm-hmm. a little bit better than the originals, but some of them I don't, some of them I don't like as much as the originals. Um, like there's a couple ones on meta modern sounds and country music. That's really like, kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like wavy. There's some cool instruments behind them. Yeah. And it just doesn't sound as good in the bluegrass side, but there's some of them I do like better, but I thought that was cool. Well, so. I, I like the fact that, uh, he cut some of his stuff from, uh, what was the name of his band before he sort of did his own thing? But that that one song, uh, Sometimes Wine, was like mm-hmm. one of his older, like not a Sturgill Simpson song. It was, yeah, I can't remember the name of the band. But like that song, I have been digging um, Sometimes Wine. Do we think Sturgill Simpson cuts his own grass? I'm going I'm to go, yeah. You're going to go, go, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like. It depends on, on like. Does he live on an estate, like with a lot of acreage, or does he just have a modest house? I think that's. I feel like. On that. I feel like he's got some acreage just based off of his early COVID, uh, uh, the Dick Daddy Survival School stuff. Um, like I think he's got his own acreage, and I think the image from the album is him. That's him on his actual. Lawn he's hole. on a rider. That's why I asked. Yeah. And then. Is that his personal rider that the photo's on? I feel like he's kind of has that vibe. That would be like he cuts his own grass. That's just a photo from his own rider. But you never know. You do never know. You never know. No, I wouldn't put it past him though. I think he might. Maybe he'll cut his immediate grass, like his yard, hmm. and then his acreage maybe. He might have some goats because I feel like goats are good. He for could that just goats and sheep and cows that mow the grass for you. Do you think you could get yeah. a goat in the city? Like, if you had, like, a city goat, would that, uh, what do you think the rules are? I know there's, like, certain rules for, like, chickens, but, like, city goats. I would imagine they have to you know, stay in, might, like, a backyard. I said, you might have to check with the proper authorities. I mean, I don't have, like, a homeowner's association, so. Oh, so then you can do it. Easy. Yeah. yeah just do anything. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. There's no HOA. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Which is good and bad because uh, I'm like in this like little sliver of my neighborhood that like misses two HOAs, and I take care of my property. But I've, my neighbors have talked about it. they've got like a frisbee golf goal in their front yard. Um, 
they've pitched a tent, like an actual tent in their front yard uh, before. And uh, so it, not having an HOA is good, but it also can be bad. Is your new place uh, HOA'd up there, uh, Blaney? No? Negative. Out on your own. No on the HOA, um, thankfully. Uh, you know, the, the, the pitch in the tent in the front yards, I've never really understood that. I understand, you know, okay, maybe they got kids, but take them camping. Actually yeah. go somewhere. Or the, I don't really uh, understand either. Plus they have like a big backyard. Although like my street kind of is kind of like an easement. So there's like not a lot of traffic. So it's almost kind of like a dead end ish. So I guess they're just like, well, nobody's going to drive by. And then there's like, then, then there's like yeah. trees and stuff across the street as, as opposed to like facing other houses. So maybe they just are like, feels like the forest. Let's pitch a tent. I don't know. I mean, Weird. The sweat. only, the only logical thing I can think of of pitching a tent there is it's like, you do it once. Okay. Let's say you get a new tent or you're mm -hmm. planning a trip and you want to actually set the tent up, spend the night in it and see if it's got any problems. Okay. I can understand that, but it was like multiple days. But I, I don't yeah. think you'd want to do you that in like the backyard. Place. Like that's not like a front yard activity. Yeah. No, no, that's a backyard thing. Yeah. Like I, I, I wouldn't want to like, the only thing I want to do in the front yard is mow it. Like I'm not hanging yeah. out. I've never yard. really understood. And maybe it's because I've never lived in this type of neighborhood, like front porch sitting. Like I have a small front porch. I could put a chair out there if I really wanted but, like, people that, like, porch sit, but, like, on the front porch, I guess if you have, like, a really nice, like, veranda-type porch and you have, like, a nice neighborhood maybe, but I don't really understand, like, front porch sitting. You're just, like, out in the open for people to watch. I think a lot of that, though, depends on the neighborhood that you're in. And, like, I live on, like, at an intersection of kind of a busy street. Mm -hmm. So you just be looking at cars the whole time. Like yeah. If when I sit on the back porch, it's just you still hear the cars, but it's a little bit more like peaceful and intimate and a little bit more intimate, um, which they are now done. Everything is done with the porch. So porch up yeah. deck update deck That's deck date. Thing. Yeah. My deck update is that nice. they got the underpinning done. They put the step on, hung some uh, party lights outside. So it's a nice little uh, little area. So. Nice. Cool. We need, we need yeah. to get this the show on the road and come down and Literally. do a little porch uh, porch porch sessions. Porch. Yeah. I'm down for it. Bring yeah. a banjo. I, I, my front porch sit all the time. Uh, my porch faces my front yard, and there's barn, so I sit out there every morning and drink my coffee. But it, yeah, it's a little bit different. I think if you live in the city, mm -hmm. right? I mean, well, how far back from the road are you? Like, are you, um, like, can you see the main road? The my backyard through the trees, you can see the main road a little bit. Cars go by. Uh, but I'm kind of on like a separate gravel road to like my front porch doesn't. Okay. And my front porch faces like you're coming right at my house. So see, I get, coming up. I get that. And you got a barn to look at. Like that seems like a good place to enjoy some coffee. Or yeah. if you're like a little bit older, I know, you know, a little bit older folk like to sit on their front porch or even sit on the nosy. street and judge people. Yeah. Yeah. They like to be nosy neighbors. Old, yeah. old people. I've maybe never, I'll, maybe I'll, when I retire, I'll be a porch sitter. Have you ever noticed like if you're on a road trip and you're going down like a uh, old two lane highway, like if you're heading up 49 out of Charlotte, like and get to where it's down to two lanes and there's people that live on the highways. There's old folks that like set chairs out in their lawn, like closer to the road. Like they have a porch, but then they still sit yeah. like, and just watch traffic. Like, is that what you're? Is that what you're doing? And they're watching for speeders. <laughs> yeah, the probably. Like, I, was on a walk, I was on a walk the other day, and there was an old lady that had done that. Like, she had a porch kind of area, but she had taken a chair all the way to the edge of the road and was sitting there. And on top of that, she had like this like crate cage thing, and I didn't realize what it was until I walked by. And it had some sort of like gerbil or hamster. So not only had she brought the chair to the edge of the road, like she brought her gerbil hamster animal to the edge. I guess she was letting it get some fresh air, sunshine, Oops. sunshine. Uh, it was, she had some there motion. was a guy in, in high point that used to sit 
same thing. He'd sit right on the side of the road and his house was a little bit off the road, but he'd sit there and he'd actually have a speed gun, a radar gun. <laughs> and he'd sit there and, and watch you and, and check your speed as you're coming at him. And I guess, I don't know what the hell he's going to do. Yeah. What, you cops? think he was like a retired <laughs> cop maybe? Maybe. I yell at cars. He wasn't a cop. Not He wasn't even like a retired cop? No. no. Like, where do you get, like, where do I you mean, get a maybe. surplus uh, speed gun? I mean, is there I like mean, speedguns.com? Baseball team. Huh. Yeah. Fair, yeah. Fair. I feel like they're probably easily accessible. Mm, can you like petition for the police department to come out and do like speed traps in your neighborhood if there's like bad speeders? Is that a thing? Can you like request cops to do that? I mean, I would imagine if you just like keep calling them and just pester them, they might show up. Maybe. Oh, yeah. You like, get how do they deter- like, determine where, which areas? They'll put a kids at play sign up on the side of the road and people might slow down. Maybe. Now, yeah. is it slow children at play or there's slow children that are at play, like, like kids that can't run fast? Which is it? Both. You need a sign for both. You can buy a Bushnell uh, Velocity Speed Gun on Amazon for only ninety four ninety six. Oh, nice. and that's dollars yeah. shipping and handling. Mm-hmm. Is there a minimum speed on it? Because it'd be fun just to like run and track yourself. <laughs> What's the, like the <laughs> the Office episode where they tried to run past the um, speed limit yeah. sign and see how fast they could? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, mm-hmm. man. Uh, the, the more I'm looking at this speed gun, maybe I'm just going to sit out on my front porch now and just uh, track the speed. Um, you would think it would that. maybe deter some people because they're like, oh, why does that guy or girl have a speed gun? Maybe they have some sort of connection to the police. Like, you would maybe think it would deter people from speeding if they saw it. I don't know. We had a really... Just sit out there on your bike <laughs> with a speed gun, wear a helmet... It's like you're one of a bike cop, and then wear have like a black button-down shirt and black pants, and like go to the and and a fake badge. And mustache. can you do a citizens yeah. like a? You know how you can do a citizens arrest, which I don't know how that works. Citizens arrest. Citizens arrest. How does that even work? But could you do like a citizen citation for somebody speeding? <laughs> It's like, sir, do you know how fast you're going? I have no legal authority to write this, but I'm just writing it on a piece of notebook paper that I have. I have a little composition book here, and it says that you were going this speed, so please uh, take care of that, if you don't mind. I mean, you can call in. You have, like, the truckers that call in license plate numbers if there's, like, people on the interstate being jackasses. Because I know on Andy Griffith's show, they always, like, did the whole citizen's arrest thing. Like, that was the, you could do a citizen's arrest. Like, what is the legality of that, Mo? Can you actually do it? Is it a thing that you can actually do? Like, could you That's actually... Sp- I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't... Huh? I feel like... I, I don't think I could take somebody seriously if they were like, this is a citizen's arrest. I'd be like, Pfft. okay. Yeah. If someone came up to me, like, I'm placing you under citizen's arrest, I'd be like, get out of here. Get your hands off me. Because you have... No right to do Zero that. authority. Yeah. No yeah. arrest or detention permitted. No private person may arrest another person except as provided. Oh, there is an exception. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, when felony, when it was permitted, a uh, private person may detain a person. A felony, breach of the peace, crime involving physical injury. So there are, okay, There you can make in North Carolina. There you go. You can make a citizen's arrest in certain circumstances. Speeding, oh. speeding is not one of them. Are you just? <laughs> you can't write a citation. A are you yeah, pushing them your say. car? Yeah. What are you, you gonna throw them in the back? I'm, I'm so confused station. how a citizen's arrest works. Yeah. Do you just detain them? Do you just hold them until you like you call the police and they actually arrive and arrest the person? I don't understand. Yeah. It says a private person may detain another person when he mm, he has probable cause to believe that the person detained has committed in his presence. That's a very, like, uh, male-driven statute. Um, Well, most crimes are performed by males. Uh, A felony, breach of the peace, a crime involving physical injury to another person, or a crime involving theft or destruction of property. Um, Manner of detention. The detention must be in a reasonable manner considering the offense involved and the circumstances of the detention. Maybe... No longer than the period of time for the earliest of the following. D- 
determination that no offense has been committed, surrender of the person to a detained or detained to a law enforcement officer or surrender to officer. Seems like a lot of trouble. Yeah. I think you would need more than one person to successfully execute a citizen's arrest. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, just like lock them in a porter john or something. <laughs> like the, like there you go. Just put a stick in the little, uh, little yeah. lock thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, nah, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And we're going to put you in this shitty Ugh. festival. We, john. We, we did that to one of my buddies. We were on a hike and, the only uh, bathroom that they had was like just this old, old Porta John. Who knows when the last time that it was uh, uh, cleaned? And we got a stick and just put it through the door, and he couldn't get out for like ten minutes. So it was Ugh. fun. So gross. Porta potties are. I so like gross. Bubba. I like Bubba in a Porta John. In Dover. Oh, I remember that. In like 2013, he went to the Porta John. We were. It was raining. During practice, he went to a porta john and I stacked up like five tires in front of the door and he couldn't get out. It's pretty funny. Did he ever get you back for that one or? Uh, yeah, sure. He did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Almost. We're going to go with he did. So that way there is yeah. no. There's no. Yeah. Statue of limitations. Uh, you're good. Um, yeah. the speed gun thing, I, we always had an idea for a video for NASCAR.com that we never did. That was like the pit road cop. Or like you get a speed gun and you, you're like checking speeds on pit road using the speed gun and you're writing citations to the drivers and all that. Be a funny like sketch, but mm. we never actually pulled that off. But like full on short shorts, like Reno 911 level pit road cop. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah. I feel it. It's like walk up. Sir, do you know how fast you're going? Like the engine's blaring so they can't hear anything. And yeah. Be fun. During practice or something, when yeah. people all ass on pit road. Yeah. You know? And I used to, like, yeah. try and stuff like, it. Sir, you're going up. Get yeah. some, like, great, like, leg propped up on pit wall with the gun, just sort of. But they're going way too fast that you can't actually, like, it's not registering on the gun. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's possibilities for it. Who knows? We'll keep that one. Yeah. Keep that one open in a notebook. Probably a reason that it hasn't been filmed yet. Probably uh, one getting the permission to do it probably from competition would be the biggest hurdle. You do it during practice. Yeah, I don't yeah. think. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you want to do what? Yeah, no, that, 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 yeah, no. Um, huh? When, yeah, if you want to do it during practice, you can like run out on pit road when guys are waiting to do like qualifying rounds and have oh. a piece of paper. You get thrown yeah. out of the racetrack. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I do get kind of nervous calling pit stops like from the pit wall. Cause there's been times where like on the rare occasion, like a car has, what was it? Mark Martin. Did he like go barreling into pit, like, so there's occasionally, yes. and you're mm-hmm. so distracted cause you're like working and doing the race call. Like I would hope I would have the reflexes to like get out of the way if a car like lost control on pit road. But like, there's always like a little tinge of fear. Like when I'm on pit wall calling a stop, like, well shit, this could, go awry no that like that is definitely like you should never if you're on pit road especially as a fan or somebody working it like rule of thumb never really turn your back on the cars that are on the racetrack like i know sometimes you have to yeah it's hard though when you're working and calling a race i know i know um yeah it's the same as like like if you're standing like okay let's say you're standing like outside turn two at a dirt track yeah and you're watching the leader like you shouldn't turn your back because someone can come flipping over the fence. Yeah. That's like, well, and cool. a lot of times, like Kim, I know you guys do it. Stand in the opening to pit road. Yeah, like that's, and that's I usually have to stand in the opening because I am not very tall. So, like, in order for me to see to be able to call stops, like I either find an opening. And sometimes, if there's like empty boxes, I'll actually stand on pit wall. If you, it's, it was Michigan in 2012 that Mark Martin hit, um, he came off of four and went across and one of our camera guys, Jason Allison, um, has this shot where he stayed in it and followed it all the way to where it hit the other, like the opening of pit road and like you hear the tires pop. It's on NASCAR.com. It's on NASCAR's YouTube, but that was one of the, like, if you're that camera guy. And I, he held the shot, but I feel like he might have had to change his underwear afterwards. Yeah. 
I give credit to camera guys, man. Camera guys are pretty, pretty gnarly. Uh, like different skill levels of camera guys. Like that's pretty cool. And then you look at like golf or baseball. Yeah. Camera people who follow the ball, like golf. I have no idea how they do that. No. Like, they crank. Unbelievable. I feel like they crank the, um, there's some setting that they crank on the viewfinder to where the ball is like a blaring, like white dot. Um, hmm. Strickert knows all about that because he's a hawk, uh, golf nerd. Um, but there's something that they do like with the iris level or something to do all that. That they can see it. Yeah. Really yeah. easy. I mean, it's, it's still, it's still, you're following a little ball. Like it takes practice, like following a race car, trying to do a flyby of a race car. Like that's a, that's an art form, especially when they get those tight shots of the cars going <laughs> through a turn. Like I can't like, I got to stay wide if I'm shooting and just hope that I yeah. get something. Um, something crosses yeah. your line of vision. Cause you like start wide and then you slowly start to work your way in and you kind of practice it and all that. And it's, um, those guys, and especially with covering racing like that camera guys are putting themselves in some, uh, compromising yeah spots sure if you're i mean if you're in the turns at a track like say homestead right when you guys go by you're getting sand tire like anytime the pack comes by at homestead this stands out to me because coming into three we were cj and i were out there the camera guy cj latirzo and every time the cars came by we'd have to like duck if we yeah. weren't actually like, Even like little rubber bits yeah. too. Yeah. Oof. You end up with this, you got to wear goggles or glasses and you end up with a little nice little uh, ring right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When we're entering right up by the fence. Yeah. There's stuff that gets yeah. all the way. Yeah. We were, me and Bubba were watching a truck race a couple years ago at Kentucky in three and four. I get Kentucky like photographers. They can stand right at the yeah. fence. Yep. In the middle of three and four. And we were standing just right there at the fence, just watching. And someone wrecked over there. And it was like dust, dirt, rubber, smoke. I was like, damn. A lot of debris. At the Roval, la at the Roval last year, we were out at the rear chicane on the backstretch at the exit. And that was where... I think the day before, like this was during the actual cup race, but the day before, I think a lot of folks had gone off and like hit that spot in the wall. And there's nothing on that back stretch. Like there's no fence there. It's just kind of open, but there's enough wall. And there's this moment of, okay, so if they wreck here, what is my, like, which way do mm -hmm. I duck? Where do I go? Like, what's my, what's my escape plan? Or do I just stand there and take it? <laughs> just take it. You ain't got to take it. <laughs> Not going to end well. Yeah. Yeah. Take it. How quickly can you duck? Yeah. No, that's it's that's the one, like, I think uh, with, with camera guys and with the TV stuff, people take that for granted a lot of times that we get these really cool shots of stuff. Um, but at the same time, Pit road can be a dangerous place. Yeah. A very dangerous place. Um, and then when you have all the fans, yeah. no offense, it's been very sad not to have regular fans at the track and in the infield. It has made the industry jobs much easier on the infield side without fans in the garage and pit road. <laughs> I know they're not going to want to hear that, but... <laughs> I know, like, the camera guys have been able to get, like, all these super cool shots. Like, pit road, you don't have to worry about, like, fans in the way of your view. Uh, I don't know his name. Uh, but he's, he's one of the guys, I don't know who he works for, Fox, NBC, I don't know. Shorter guy, really muscular, but he runs around with the camera. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, what's his name? He's so nice, too. <laughs> I feel terrible yeah. for not remembering his name. I mean, but he's friend. He's, he's, yeah, he's everywhere with that headlamp camera, and like it's wild. I'm like, damn, man. You're he's also in like TikTok. Too. Well, I mean, he sprints everywhere yeah. with that thing. Um, yeah, things heavy. I mean, he's yeah, he's in really good. He's got to be, I guess, if he's doing what he's yeah. doing. There uh, is a bit of a um, a back and forth between the live guys and then the art guys, 
Because mm. live guys always, like, their shot since they're live trumps ENG and the art guys. But there's always a little bit of contention between that because it's like, we can we can work in the same, like, you don't have to just, like, walk right in front of my lens. Like, there's Who always has a the harder job? job? Trying to shoot live footage or trying to shoot something that's very creative and artistic? It's two different concepts i, I know they're totally different but i'm saying like which is more challenging live you have to be able to quick react and like kind of feel where i mean and you have to do this uh, doing art stuff too but a lot of times their camera shading and a lot of their stuff is done not by them whereas the mm -hmm. art guys are sitting there and having to get the i mean like change the frames and the white balance set up for different things lenses changing out lenses there's it's two different skills i mean it's the same skill set but with live, a lot of times it's just sort of a point and shoot. There's hmm. a few more things that you worry about with doing art. Got it. Um, hmm. But both both do a, a hell of a job. Um, and I'm surprised. I guess Strickert's yeah. not paying attention. He should have. He would have chimed in by now on this if he was actually paying attention. Um, he probably has up on mute. He's got stuff going on because there's been there's been a lot of like silly season stuff going on in the past couple of Long days. Long news, so, uh, heavy news. Yeah. Um, so we don't have to get in. We don't have to get into all that. I do want to uh, take a quick commercial break because Kim, I noticed you're wearing a lovely uh, shirt there. What is what is on your shirt? Sugarlands Distilling Company. Yeah, this this section of the of the podcast. Uh, I thought you were going to hold up a glass. You were drinking it at one fifteen in the afternoon. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? Like why? Just you know. <laughs> just water. My goodness, that's even this early. is not really this is me. this is a uh, sipping cream. <laughs> sipping cream? <laughs> yes, this is that's, that's what's in Aurora's cup too. Yeah, yeah just moonshine oh, in her cup. That's why it's going, in a coffee. Going hard on the sipping cream. <laughs> Appalachian Jeez. sipping cream or sip in cream. It's a dark chocolate coffee. So, um, Ooh. now yeah, we we got a couple of couple of Sugarlands uh, things. Got the Daytona bottle here, the limited edition. Uh, Hundred proof uh, corn liquor. You fancy. I'm fancy. I got my all kinds of stuff. But the reason I proof? say that is they sent all this stuff and they're doing a sweepstakes right now. It's these sips up to you sweepstakes. You can go to uh, sugarlands.com forward slash NASCAR to learn more about it. They're uh, giving out daily prizes, um, Sugarland Shine stuff, NASCAR stuff. There's still three weeks to enter and play. Because we got three weeks left in the season, so go to sugarlands.com forward slash NASCAR to find out more. And that was a rather tasty sip that I took of that mm -hmm. Sugarlands uh, shine, which would be really good in this coffee, but it is Ooh. one one fifteen on a Tuesday. Five o'clock somewhere. You know, maybe Thursday. Yeah. Thir maybe Thursday when there's not as much going on. Maybe maybe that'll be there the day go. that I... Or maybe it's already in um, that's about, they make like a hundred proof. Yeah, yeah. The corn liquor is a hundred proof. Oh, the wow. Cole Swin. Hold it up, up close to the camera. I mean, I got one too. I just haven't yeah. opened the actual. It's the Daytona bottle. It's the official yeah. thing, and it even has a little uh, hologram. So it's a collector's oh, uh, fancy. collector's bottle. So I, I can't right. decide if I want to actually open this or just no, have this be. It. But it's Save it. it's a, a special occasion. Yeah, drinker. Well, and they also have this uh, Cole Swindell pre-show punch. Nice. Yeah. It's only mm. 50 proof, though. Only 50 proof. Ah. Uh, so. Uh, um, 100 proof's not good. I, I, that might be, is that the max you can legally produce uh, moonshine? Uh, 150, legally. 150, well, legally, yeah. I mean. Legally, yeah. I feel like 151 Ooh. is the high, like, what is it, diesel uh. and then... Uh, 151 is like, like lighter fluid going down your throat. Ever Everclear is 151. Um, yeah, and you can get it up to. Yeah, you can't. Everclear. I mean, you can mix it because we used to do it's 75 yeah. percent alcohol by volume. Um, oh, there's yeah. even a 190 proof. Who? I don't know if that one's. Yeah. Anyway, grain alcohol. It's good to mix. You don't want to yeah. drink that straight, um, which is, I think, why they have these sipping things. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, makes his own moonshine, and uh, 
he he told me that he got it to uh, 125 proof, mm-hmm. 130, and it's uh, he said it's really good. When there's a way, and I may be completely making this up, but I remember right. from all of the old like moonshine guy like. If you shake it, you can see the proof by the number of bubbles and the size the of bubble. the bubbles. Yeah. yeah. The less less bubbles and Really? Uh yeah. the higher proof it is. Yeah. Huh. That's one of those old like moonshine. Have you ever seen anyone make moonshine before? Yeah. It's pretty fascinating. Like I like watching it. I I feel like it's now that it's more of like a a craft thing. Like I don't feel yeah. like the the um the revenue man's going in as much and cracking down on moonshine stills like they used to. No. They've got like bigger, you know, like the whole meth deal. Um, they're also, worried about like I, you have to be making a lot of moonshine to get yeah in trouble. I did. I'm probably selling it. Yeah. It and I mean the the truth is like the good stuff is no different than the store bought. It's just it's not taxed. So mm-hmm. that's what makes it illegal. Um. I did have in my freezer for a little bit, maybe. I don't know if I actually had it in my freezer. I'm not, not committing to having it in my freezer or not. But um, some stuff that was reportedly run off of a still by a NASCAR Hall of Famer. Um, I won't name any names, but uh, I, I got it when I became a Mason. Like that was... You're a Mason? Yeah, yeah third degree. I haven't huh. really done anything with it. Uh, I'm a, I'm a bad Mason. Um, I got this bottle. I got to show y'all. Yeah. But it basically, like, I was given that, and I had it for a while. And uh, There's a Masonic up. temple in my uh, neighborhood. Or whatever you call them in my yep. neighborhood. I, when I lived, what? When I lived over there, like, I entertained actually joining that lodge, but that's not the lodge that I joined. Joined Long Creek Lodge. It, oh. Strangely, because the building has zero windows. That stuff oh. is cat daddy. Yeah. 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 Looking yeah. You. yeah. That, that name looks real familiar, you know, just saying. Yeah. yeah. Just so familiar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, I forget who gave this to me. Uh, it was a gift from somebody. I think my mom found it or something, or someone gave it to my dad and he gave it to me or something yeah. a couple of years ago. But I was like, that's so cool. I didn't know. Yeah. Any of those yeah. like spiced, uh, Liqueur, like one of the ones that Sugarland sent was the apple pie moonshine and like mm-hmm. stuff like that is good to me. Like as we're getting closer to Christmas and fall, as it gets cooler, adding that spice liqueur into something uh, like a, a mold wine or like a, a, a eggnog. I'm like getting excited. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those warm cordials, I guess. Spices. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah. It's good. Uh, yeah. Never had any cat daddy before. I've not. I've had that. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's only eight proof, but still, it'll still mm-hmm. get you there. Um, yeah, it's still cool. Like, yeah. you have some by Junior Johnson. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, that that jar that I have, there's still there's cherries in it, and there's still enough that's covering the cherries. Like, I, ah, yeah. I mean, it, it, this has been probably. I've had it for probably almost 10, eight, eight years now. Okay. Eight-ish oh, years. Wow. Um, and I don't know how old it was when I got it then, uh, but I'm hesitant to eat the cherries. I haven't had one eat yet. Eat the cherry. <laughs> eat the cherry. Yeah. It's been sitting there for a while, so I mean, like, is it still good? It's been pickled. Yeah, kind of. Like... Eat a cherry on the show. <laughs> oh, Next yes. It's been, it's been in great, I mean, alcohol. It's got to be preserved, right? That's science. Yeah. I think science. I think if we do the show on the porch, that might be the best place to because I don't want to like yeah, eat it in here yeah. and have a bad reaction um, yeah. <laughs> on all of this. Gear. I don't know. I'd love to know. Like, okay, yeah, is it, is it really bad? Like, I don't know what the fruit uh-huh. in that would do, do. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's pickled, but I don't know. Is there anyone that like we know that like we could th- like everybody's got that friend that will eat just about anything like are you that friend of the friend group Chuck? I, it was not me it was not me it was it was uh my roommate bubba he would pretty much do about anything um but that was not me i was not the adventurous one when it came to eating random things 
I don't know if we interesting if we know anyone that would be uh I'm sure really somebody will like do. tweet and be like I'll do it I'll eat it I'm sure there's a handful of listeners yeah that would oh work. a listener would for sure do it <laughs> yeah but but we're in a pandemic so sorry I can't I can't give you, can't give, can't give you my cherry listeners don't <laughs> oh careful <laughs> On Don't my, put your fingers in my jar. On my deck, yeah. No. You're not, you're not stealing my cherry on my deck. Um, nope, nope, nope. Not gonna go there. But uh, yeah. Anyway, you write that one down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I won't have to take that out. That's fine. We didn't cuss. We're doing good on the cussing. It's a, yeah, but it's a no super, cussing. New and improved glass case of emotion. <laughs> not really. We just. For sometimes we forget to. Wow! Oh. oh my gosh! Someone forgot to turn their ringer off. Oh, oh my gosh! Kim, because it's going to her I computer. Don't know why, I don't know why it does that on my phone. It was a solicitor. What is it? Amateur hour? <laughs> Actually, yes. I can't get yeah. it to turn off on my phone. Like when I when I have my computer on, calls go to my phone and my computer. Oh man. Um. Well, speaking of calls, there's going to be some calls down in Texas this weekend. Tejas. Tejas. It's a little bit of a transition from. Kansas to Texas should be, what, 80 degrees, I think, maybe? So, a little bit warmer down there? So, I think um, it's supposed to be, like, 80, but there, apparently there's, like, a cold front Ooh. coming in. And, like, they say it's going to be, like, high 50s, low 60s on Monday. But a lot of people are saying it's come. it might come sooner. So, it could be 80 in Texas or it could be, like, 60. I don't know what it's going to be, but we've been back and forth about that. Actually, fun fact um, – race teams like to be meteorologists Mm -hmm. and weather people. And me and Todd were talking about that today. We're like, well, what can we do? Because obviously if it's going to be colder, you need to turn your car out. But if it's going to be hot, you want downforce in it. So that's like game time decision that you only have like till Thursday to do. (laughs) But fun fact. No race teams like keep a meteorologist like on payroll. I feel like so – I didn't know this till today, but Todd was like, yeah, the guy who usually always checks the weather for us and give us the forecast. He said, cold front might come sooner. So I was like, I don't know what he, what else does he do? <laughs> sure. He, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, that person is uh, maybe an engineer or something that, yeah. you know, also monitors that stuff. But I like to think yeah. it's a crotchety old man with like a b- bad hip or knee that, uh, she's like, well, feels like the weather's going to change my hips, hips, hips like, going off. Like yeah. He's like, all right. <laughs> The yeah. rain is coming. It's like the weather rock. Yeah. Yeah. It's wet. It's raining. Rock's blowing. It's windy. Yeah. Is What's the weather gallop? like? Open your window and look out. That's what the weather's yeah. like. But mm-hmm. Tejas will be fun. I mean, I, I yeah. Texas, then Martinsville, then Phoenix. Jeez. You know, the pandemic sucks also because uh, Torchy's Tacos is not open. Ah. Uh. In Texas, that's a bummer. I don't think it is. It might. I don't know. Bucky's Bucky's is coming to North and South Carolina. No way. Yes way. That's amazing. That's yeah. like the best news ever. I love Bucky's. I, could, I don't think I've ever had Bucky's. You, it, I mean, it's it it's great. It's huge. Um, have you never been to the Bucky's? Like it across the track from Texas. It's literally uh, right there. I don't think so. I've just been in Torchy. Massive, massive gas station. Uh, I also haven't okay. worked Texas Motor Speedway since twenty. Since you were a Miss Bird Cup, I yeah. had to go for like one sponsor event, but it was just like a quick like two hours at the track and then leave. That was like two years ago. But otherwise, I haven't worked Texas. Yeah, in six years. It's gonna be. This is gonna be up near Raleigh. Off of Raleigh? forty, yeah, forty miles right. northwest of Raleigh. So, but it's on Interstate yeah. 40, so that cross. Uh, Maybe it'll slowly inch its way. I'm waiting for Wawa to come to North Carolina. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of my uh, my jam. There's I'm a couple fan. in North Carolina. Wawa's. I feel like there's one on the way to Martinsville. I think before you cross into Virginia, there's one. I know they're in Virginia. I swear it was, it's in North Carolina. I could be wrong. I think you're lying. It could be once you're in Virginia. I think it's in Virginia. All right. I believe you. 
right above the NC border. Okay. It feels it. like it. It's Here's like so Google. close. Yeah. So close. I do enjoy, like, everybody's like, oh, what was the best? Oh, QT. Oh, uh, Sheets. Bucky's. It's like, can we not agree that they're all good? They all have their pluses. Mm-hmm. Come and go. They all are great. A good old 7 Eleven. What what's the one in Iowa? Come and go. Come and go. Come and go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Start with a K. K- Weren't they supposed to show? Weren't we trying to get them to send us shirts? Probably. Like a, a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Come I mean, and go if you're listening. We would love shirts. We we will. <laughs> we will. We will wear your shirts with pride. Um, we will. <laughs> But yeah, speaking of pride, I think it is time to proudly press the button um, and and move on from this this shoot 'em up show. I don't know why I went with shoot 'em up Texas. That's why. Don't to Texas. That's why. Uh, pew, pew. I, I was confused too for a second. Yeah. No, it's good. That should yeah. be a good one. Yeah. So yeah. Texas. Maybe you'll come back with a uh, cowboy hat. I and some six shooters. Hope so. Yeah. I know. I don't know we should have won them earlier in the spring. Mm-hmm. But. You should, you should put the uh, the 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 rifle that you got for the put it above the the fireplace. Mm. Oh, the pole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't know. I shoot that thing a lot. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I, I got an old musket. I hung in uh, another room above uh, a door. Um, but yeah, I, I just I really didn't want to. Have to drill into brick. Yeah. I don't have anything. I don't have the right drill bit. To Didn't have for a door. doorbell. I really want to get, and I talked to a buddy who lives in West North Carolina, a set of bear arms to hold my uh, musket. So oh, yeah. It is. Like taxidermy bear arms? Uh huh. Uh-huh. So it is bear arms, bearing arms. Uh-huh. That would be pretty funny. It's a literal interpretation of the second word. Speaking of taxidermy, <laughs> damn turkey I shot in quarantine. He's. Should be done by now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it, was my, it was my first turkey, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll get it." You know, stuff. And, It'll it, yeah. watch it come right in time for Thanksgiving, and you can hang her, up, hang her up for the holiday. I was hoping that it'd be done around Martinsville, where I can just drive up there and get it. Oh yeah. But it's up in Martinsville because I got it on Jeff Burton's property, and the guy's not too far from there. So I don't know. I haven't heard from the guy. He might just take him take. Took my money and ran. But maybe it takes some time. But you know, maybe I know it takes time. But you'll bring back the turkey from Martinsville along with the clock, and you can have them together. It'll be a yeah. whole thing. Yeah, there you go. It'll be a whole. Thing. I get to talk my turkey too. Well, we'll find out after you guys rate and review in iTunes, uh, subscribe on YouTube, comment, tweet, all that fun stuff. We'll find like. out here on another episode of Glass Case of Motion. Yeah. Final Thanks for joining.